Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. In this video, we're going to look at solving quadratic equations using the square root property. As we're taking a look at the square root property, we're going to be looking at equations that are of the form x squared equals k. Now our goal is going to be to solve to get x alone. So in order to get rid of that squared power, we're going to have to square root both sides of our equation. So on the left hand side, when we square root that x squared, the square root and the x squared cancel each other out. So we're just going to get x equals. Now we need to be careful when we're square rooting whatever our k value is on the right hand side because there's technically two answers. There's a positive answer and there's a negative answer. Now depending on if this number is square rootable or not, we would want to either do that square root or break down the radical. But for right now, I'm just going to write it as the square root of k. So let's say we had the equation x squared equals 9. To get rid of that squared power on our x, we said that we were going to square root both sides. So on the left hand side, the square root and the squared cancel each other out. So we just get x equals. And on the right hand side, we talked about there being two answers. So we need to make sure that we're throwing a plus and a minus in front of our answer. 9 is nicely square rootable. Hopefully we remember that the square root of 9 is just 3. Now keep in mind there are two answers in here because of that plus or minus we're actually saying that x equals positive 3 or x equals negative 3. Now when we're using the square root property we know that not every number breaks down nicely as far as a radical. So if we were looking at the equation x squared equals 5. When we square root both sides to get our x equals, well we know that 5 doesn't break down nicely underneath the radical, so we're just going to leave that in its radical form. We're just going to leave it as plus or minus the square root of 5. Now I'm going to throw another example at you. Let's say we had the equation 4x squared minus 48 equals 0. Now up to this point we've just had x squared equals a number. So what we want to try to do in here is get our x squared alone. So the first thing I would do is take that minus 48 and I would add 48 over to the right hand side. So we get the equation 4x squared equals 48. Now I'm going to get rid of that 4 in front of my x squared by dividing both sides by 4. So we get x squared equals 12. Now in order to get rid of that squared power, just like we've been doing, we're going to square root both sides. So we're going to get x equals plus or minus. Now that 12 isn't a nice perfect square, but we can break down the square root of 12 using a factor tree. So 12 is 4 times 3. 4 is 2 times 2. Because we're doing a square root, we're looking for a pair of numbers. So here we've got a pair of 2's that we can take out of our radical. But this 3 didn't get paired up with anything, so it stays underneath the radical. So in this case, x is going to equal plus or minus 2 root 3. Now we're going to change things up on you just a little bit in here. So let's say we had the equation x minus 5 squared equals 36. Our goal is still to try to solve to get x alone, but right now x is trapped inside of these parentheses by that squared power. So just like we've been doing, in order to get rid of a squared power, we're going to square root both sides. So I square root the left hand side, I square root the right hand side. On the left hand side, when that squared and that square root cancel out, then the only thing we have left over is that x minus 5. On the right hand side, be careful, 36 is nicely square rootable, we get 6, but don't forget to put your plus and your minus in front of there. Now we have to be very careful here because there is actually two answers on the right hand side right now. There's positive 6 and there's negative 6. So what I like to do is split these equations up. So I would say x minus 5 equals the positive 6 and then I would say x minus 5 equals the negative 6. Now if I add the 5 over to the positive 6, I'm going to get x equals 11. But if I add the 5 over to the negative 6, then we get x equals negative 1. So here our two answers are 11 and negative 1. Now this example is going to be very similar to the last one, but I'm going to throw an extra number in here. So let's say we had 2x minus 3 squared equals 18. Now our goal is still to get x alone, and x is trapped inside of the parentheses by the squared power. So we're going to start by square rooting both sides. So on the left hand side we get 2x minus 3. On the right hand side we're going to get plus or minus, and I'm going to break down that square root of 18. So 18 is 9 and 2 but 9 is 3 times 3, so we got a pair of 3's and an unpaired 2, so that's 3 root 2. Now just like I did on the last example, I'm going to split up these equations. So I'm going to get 2x minus 3 equals the positive 3 root 2, 
and I'm going to get 2x minus 3 equals the negative 3 root 2. Now I'm going to work on this left equation first. I'm going to add the 3 over to the right hand side, but I have to be careful. I can't combine this 3 with the 3 root 2 since this 3 root 2 has that square root attached to it. So we're just going to get 2x equals 3 plus 3 root 2. And then I need to get rid of that 2 in front of the x. When I divide that 2 over, I need to make sure that I'm dividing this entire right hand side by the 2. So I'm going to get x equals, and I'm actually just going to leave my answer as this fraction, 3 plus 3 root 2 all over 2. Now when we solve this other equation, it's going to be very similar. I'm going to add that 3 over to the right hand side, but I can't combine it with that radical over there. So we're going to get 2x equals 3 minus 3 root 2. And then I'm going to divide that 2 over to the right hand side, making sure that I divide the whole thing by 2. So now we'll get x equals 3 minus 3 root 2 all over 2. Now as we're using our square root property, one thing we have to be careful about is running into negative numbers with radicals. So for example, if we had x squared equals negative 15. When we go to square root both sides, we have to be careful because of that negative 15 underneath the radical. So the left hand side is going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to get x equals. Now we're going to look at breaking down the square root of negative 15. And what I'm going to do is split it into 15 and negative 1. Because of that negative 1, we have to remember that we're dealing with an imaginary number in here. So this would actually be plus or minus i root 15. Now we might also run into an equation that looks like x plus 2 squared equals negative 16. So now when I go to square root both sides, again on the left hand side, hopefully that's pretty straightforward. The squared and the square root cancel out, so we just get x plus 2. On the right hand side, when I split this up into 16 and negative 1, we can actually break down that 16 into 4 and 4. So we're going to get plus or minus 4i on the right hand side. Now I'm going to split these equations up, so we got x plus 2 equals 4i, and we've got x plus 2 equals negative 4i. I'm going to have to subtract the 2 over, but I can't subtract it from the 4i since they're not like terms. So I'm going to write it as negative 2 plus 4i. We typically like to put the real number first and then the imaginary number second. Similar things happening on this second equation. I subtract the 2 over, but again, I can't combine those because they're not like terms. So I'm going to go negative 2 minus 4i, putting the real number first and the imaginary number second. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.